Greetings YouTube! This is Toy Customizer Wake Angel 2001, bringing you the next part of Tekaspite's commission, Jeffrey St. John! Now if you're anything like me, then Jeffrey should be a character that we all love to hate. <laughs> uh, let's do a quick biographic since this is the f he is a major character from the Archie comic book series and this is the first time I'm making him. So yeah, let's get started on that. Jeffrey was first introduced during a three issue miniseries uh, centering around Princess Sally and some trainee freedom fighters. Um, he was actually supposed to be a member of the Old Guard before Mobotropolis fell to Dr. Robotnik and he saw the freedom fighter group led by Sonic and Sally as a group of amateurs and kids. Um, yes, his father was actually an original guard so he's actually somewhat like Antoine in that respect except, you know, he's, you know, tougher. Um, he also was kind of a romantic rival vying for Princess Sally's affections. Although I recently read in his biography that he's 27 and um, at, the t at, at the point in the comic book where this kiss is occurring, Sally would have been about 15 years old and he would have been about 22, maybe 23. So yeah, you're creepy Jeffrey, you're very creepy. And that's before all the other stuff that he does. Um, now, for other reasons, he's always kind of been at odds with the other heroes of the comic, despite the fact that he's technically a good guy. Um, and he did form his own cell. The, um, uh, the, what do you call it? The, uh, oh yes, the Secret Service. Yeah, um, he recruited several minor characters from the comic book series, including Hershey the Cat, a uh, character whom he would later marry. Uh, of course, Hershey the Cat, being a um, fan favorite character who is well liked, is given an an ambiguous off-screen fate where she might very well be dead. Uh, while Jeffrey St. John revealed himself to actually be a member of the Ixis Order. Ooh, yes, he is actually a servant of Ixis Nogus. He even has some magical abilities. And he helped the evil wizard uh, claim the crown of Acorn so that he could legitimately, in huge gigantic air quotes legitimately, rule not whole city. Um, Jeffrey's current fate is uh, being possessed by Ixis Nogus, who uh, is suffering a degenerative condition where he is slowly turning into some kind of mutant monster. And he possessed Jeffrey St. John's body to... Um, stave off the uh, condition until he can find a cure for himself. I couldn't find a picture of Possessed St. John, but I really didn't care to look for one. <laughs> In the end, despite the fact that we're not really supposed to like him, I guess I couldn't give St. John credit for being a complex character whose shifting allegiances actually do create quite a bunch of interesting storylines. That still doesn't mean I have to like him though. Okay, let's go ahead and make his toy. St. John started with Tails' head. Uh, I cut off the ears and a couple of his cheek points and sculpted on rounder skunk ears along with his hair and I added a bit of a scowling look to his eyes because Jeffrey rarely looks happy. Uh, quick paint job, mostly black and white. It's a rather simple scheme and you have St. John's face. The legs are super simple. They are just silvers repainted. And um, this is a good time to mention the ever-changing character design of St. John. Uh, sometimes he wears shoes, sometimes he wears knee-high boots, sometimes he has one glove, sometimes he has two, sometimes he has none, sometimes he wears a hat. Uh, this is a guy whose character design is always shifting as the comic book series progresses. It's not like an evolution of his design the way that Bunny changed over the years, but it's like he rarely appears the same way twice. Well, although his design, design did stabilize more recently with the one glove look. The tail is a unique construction. Um, that's one of the cut off tails left over from a previous commission and uh, Shadow's lower body. This time what I did was drill a hole into the tail which I stuck Shadow's tail into as a peg and then sculpted it over to make it smooth. I also sculpted over the tail to make it look uh, a little bit longer and pointier to be the skunk tail. Then I would only need to paint on the stripes. Um, 
you know, he has these two white stripes with kind of a zigzag pattern going around, and a little bit of his belly patch for what appears underneath his bandolier. The upper torso has a little bit of clay work, a sculpted on bandolier and scarf, uh, which is of course painted to look like his upper body. There's nothing too special here. Clearly you can see that the arms are shadows, although for the left hand I had to remove the glove cuff and sculpt over the wrist to make it look like an ungloved hand. I also added his iconic miniature crossbow weapon to the back of his right hand, and with a paint job, they look like his black arms. Nothing to do with aliens there. They are just black arms with a purple glove. So here is the completed Jeffrey St. John. As usual, Silver's legs plug in kind of weird to other characters' bodies, but he stands pretty solidly thanks to his big old skunk tail. And he is able to pose, um, show him with the, the thing. <clears throat> so that completes this video about Jeffrey St. John, a character who, while on the side of good for the most part, was never really a team player with the heroes of the comic. Uh, which is actually kind of interesting. You can kind of call him an anti-hero, except now he's possessed by evil. Ha ha!